I'm going to dive into introducing this woman here in just a second, Dr. Kelly, in a second. Before that, I'm talking to you because you're becoming your greatest possible self. Thank you so much for being here, for choosing to grow on your journey with us and stay plugged in, especially in 2020, to the sources of inspiration and empowerment for you, like Dr. Kelly, like these other epic guests and things that make a difference for you. Stay plugged in. Keep taking one step at a time. Next up is our iTunes review of the week. And this week, let's see who it's by. It is by Pete and Merritt. And Pete and Merritt says, awesome, fantastic content from experts about what it really takes to live a full, passionate, and purpose-driven life. Thank you, Chris, for all this fabulous work. Pete and Merritt, thank you so much for that review. I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. And if you want to give us a review, get a chance to get shouted out on a future 12-hour live stream, go to beergpscom forward slash iTunes or search Greatest Possible Self on the Apple Podcast Store, and you can give us a review there. Thank you in advance for doing that, letting us know what you love, what you want to see more of, how we can improve the show for you. We love that feedback, and who knows, you might get shouted out on a future live stream 12-hour marathon. I'm going to introduce Dr. Kelly Shu in just a second here. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, because these ideas, these techniques, tactics, strategies, her story, her journey might be the thing that you have been looking for, seeking for, and hoping for to magnetize your greatest dreams to come into you, whether you're a queen or a king or anything in between, whoever you want to be, whoever you want to create yourself as and attract into your life as well. We're going to be diving into such a powerful conversation in this next hour, so definitely stay tuned. Let's introduce Kelly. Dr. Kelly Shu is an Amazon best-selling author, speaker, and love coach for women. For over a decade now, she has touched the lives of over 10,000 women to master a life of sacred love and divine partnership. She empowers women to reclaim their inner queen and magnetize their king. She has been happily married for over a decade to her king, Richard, and they are raising their daughter, Maddie, in the outdoor Disney of the West, Boulder, Colorado. Now, we are going to dive into this powerful interview, and I want to get a thumbs up. I want to get a heart out there for Dr. Kelly coming on right before she comes onto the screen. Let us know. Put it in the comments. Get excited because we are bringing on Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly, are you ready to rock the house, Superwoman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are live <laughs> on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self now. Thank you so much for coming on, Kelly. We're going to dive right into the theme of today, which is 2020, a new year, a new decade. What does that mean for you? What that means is, you know, 2020, my husband told me this before I actually saw it out of the media, mm -hmm. which is 2020 is perfect vision. Yes. Like, how amazing is that? Is we have the opportunity to get crystal clear on what we want and to magnetize that both from the feminine and to be an action of creating. So mm. I look at this decade with huge possibility yes. of uh, really bringing in our dreams and making them a reality. I love it. You're, you're so excited. Like the, the setup over there, can't even take it. Your camera's like, what? what? Like, yeah. we're, we're magnetizing over here. It's so powerful. I love it. I love it, Kelly. This, exactly. is, this is great. Um, so I, I totally agree. The perfect vision, it, it is like such a time to be clear on our intentions, on our desires, on what we want to pull towards us, and also who we get to be to send out that energy to magnetize it back yeah. to us. So you're doing some amazing thing for women, helping them unlock and remind them themselves of that inner queen that's been in within them all along. Tell us a little bit more about the work that you do, how you serve your clients today. Yeah. So the work that I do, you know, it really is, it's a remembering. Mm. Uh, there was a time when I think the feminine was very sacred and it was honored and uh, we honored what women were and what they could bring into the world, not only babies, but, mm. you know, the ability to bring communities together, to be connected and uh it is i think something that is re-emerging mm -hmm. and women are rediscovering this power that they have and they're letting go of all the stories they've been told of what they can't do or what you know what stops them and so really you know it's it's a reclaiming it's a remembering because that inner queen she's already there mm -hmm. you know we are not broken as women we just need to remember who we are and from that, we get to radiate, you know, love and compassion and connection and to be a stand for that. Wow. Oh my gosh. You're getting, you're getting me all fired up over here, Kelly. This is, this is phenomenal because I love that everything that people want outside the external success, attracting the king, whatever it might be, 
that is all already within us. We just get to get into alignment with it so that we can see it externally. And I want to go back in your journey and talk about how did you first get aware, become aware that you had this queen within you? I'm sure there was a time where maybe you didn't see that queen from within. Yeah. Yeah. So my journey, you know, it began back in 1997. And I was in Kathmandu, Nepal. It was New Year's Eve. And uh, I'm like all happy right now, but it was a very somber moment. Hmm. I had just been diagnosed with herpes. And uh, for those who aren't, who are listening and they have no connection with herpes or or what that means, it's it's so common. And uh, and it was devastating. Hmm. I actually thought life was over. I mean it was a really tough moment. And, um, I was writing in my journal and just thinking I'm damaged. I'm unlovable. No one's going to ever love me because of this, this thing, you know? And, um, so that was a real low for me. And, uh, and then I decided in that moment, well, if I couldn't go out and have love, then I was going to make a difference in other people's lives. That's something I felt like I had control over. So I was going to go out and become a doctor and do the scholastic thing, mm. you know, be, a, be a dip, make a difference in humanity. And, uh, and I gave up, I gave up on love in that moment mm. um, for that personal, intimate, sacred partnership we talk about. And then fast forward, I went to medical school, graduated, you know, top of my class. And, uh, and I tried dating again. And during that time, uh, the man that I attracted was not a king. Mm. He was very manipulative and uh, emotionally abusive. And I felt like I was walking on eggshells all the time. And it took three years to get out of that relationship. So what I learned from that is that <laughs> love and intimacy was actually linked to pain. So I didn't want anything to deal with that. Mm. And then fast forward to uh, a wedding invitation. One of my dear friends was getting married Mm. and I received that invitation and um, I wanted to be so happy for him. I mean, what joy One of my best friends was getting married and I was recognizing this jealousy, which is not me. It's like, who is this? And really realizing it's because it's on my heart. That's what I want too. And I called my mom and in tears and said, you know what? I, I really... At this point, I guess I'm just never going to have love. I've had really bad luck. You know, um, I had also been sexually abused as a kid. And it was just like, you know what? Maybe in this lifetime, it's not my thing. And uh, maybe my standards are too high. You know, like if I try, maybe it's just like my standards are too high. And what I want is is it out there. Yeah. And I'll never forget in a second, everything changed. She said, Kelly, you need to up your standards. And in that moment, everything changed. It was like, I went from the pain body Mm. to a possibility body. Mm. And I realized I had created all these other magical things in my life. And why couldn't I Mm -hmm. magnetize a king? So it really was that phone call. And it was in in a second that I decided that I was wired for love. And if every, if other people could have it, so could I. Mm. So I hired a relationship coach. I started taking better care of myself than I ever had before. I started that journey of real self love. I invested in a ring and married myself. Mm. And what I mean by that is I was like, you know what? I I don't need to wait for the man. I'm going to like live it now. So I bought a ring and put it on my finger. And uh, shortly thereafter, a dear friend called and said, I want to send you on a blind date. And uh, he said, you know, there's this guy, I think you guys would be a great match. And we went on the blind date. And so here's the queen moment. We'd had this amazing date. I'm thinking this guy's different. Something's different here. Mm. And uh, after the date, he said, when can I see you again? Mm. And my first reaction was like, oh no, this is real. This is really happening. (laughs) And I said, well, I don't know, maybe next week or something. And he said, no, I, I want to see you this week. How about Wednesday? I said, oh, not Wednesday. You know, I see my patients on Wednesdays, you know, during the week. I, I don't date during the week. So I was present to all of those things where, you know, we're like pushing away the very thing we wow. want. Wow. And so I surrendered. And when he said, a girl's got to eat, how about I make you dinner? So in that moment, 
I realized I was a queen and I'd done the work and he was my king. We fell in love. Yeah. Within three months, I moved in. Three months after that, he proposed and almost a year to the date we got married. Uh -huh. And it was a beautiful love story. And a couple months after we were married, we got pregnant and I get to live this happily ever after that I so want for other women. Mm. So that's my story. That's why I do what I do because I went from thinking it would never happen to me to literally within a very short amount of time of deciding I could have it. Wow. And, it and Kelly, is, it's, you know, I appreciate you sharing that kind of like rock bottom moment that you thought was the end. Like there's no way I'll ever be lovable again. I'll go out and I'll, I'll prove that I'm worthy, that I'm still useful, so to speak, to, to, yeah. as a life to help other people to get what they want. And you did all this studying and all this work. And I think there's so many people out there who are trying to prove something because they feel like they're damaged. They feel like they're broken. They feel like, you know, they're not worthy. And so I just, I really want to go back to that. And for everyone who's listening, especially going into this new year, like if you've been carrying something, whether it was abuse, trauma, something happened, something happened. Maybe sometimes people don't even know consciously, but it's stuck yeah. in their subconscious. So it takes working with someone like you, Kelly, who can help them bring that out and be aware of what something like that might be so that they can break through it. Uh, but I think it's, it's so important that we, forgive whatever we can, or at least set the intention, like I am going to forgive myself for this. I'm yeah. going to forgive that person. I'm going, it's usually myself, right? It's usually with people. They're not, they're like, okay, well, they can't do anything about the other person, but I've been carrying this weight. I'm so hard on myself. Like you, you fool, yeah. you, you, you like, you know, all the, all the bad names that we could call ourselves. And it's like, we're being so hard on ourselves. but when we're finally able to heal through that, then we can come out on the other side and attract a, a king or whatever it is that we want on the other side, like you did, and, and like felt like it was a record time how it all manifested because you'd done that work on yourself, yeah. so that you yeah. could manifest it. It's so beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. You know, it, it seemed like you know you wait and you wait and you wait, and then it's like it's. I, I I look at the word like decide, like side to kill off. It's like mm. in that moment with my mother, I decided I didn't know how long it was going to take right? It just so happened in my journey. It happened really fast and it would not have happened that fast had I not, as you said, like done all the work because mm. of that. Yeah. It's that, that decision. And so if you're listening and you're thinking, Oh, I'm waiting and I'm waiting. It's not happening. Stay the course. Mm. Stay the course. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is so powerful. So when you said, I want to go out and, and serve women and, and help people, like where did you start with, with that journey? Because I, I know that you're today you're teaching curriculums, you have live events that you're doing, you're doing all kinds of stuff. But I, I want to hear a little bit more about the journey of like, how did you evolve from that point of, of getting your um, doctorate degree? Like what was, what was that like for you? How did everything start to come together and, and piece together for you? Yeah. You know, they say that, um, that there's a plan, there's a greater plan, you know, God has a plan for you. And, uh, it's so true because we show up and yet we're also guided all along the journey. And there was two, two pieces that really two, two turning points, I think for me mm -hmm. in the journey, I had had a, you know, successful practice. And, uh, when we got pregnant, I was really sick. Um, I had something called hyperemesis. And for those listening that don't know, that's a big medical term. It meant that I was getting sick like 12 times a day. Like I couldn't keep down food and water. Um, they wanted to hospitalize me and, and being the hardcore holistic woman that I was, I was like, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. I'm, you know, I'm going to work through this. And so literally, you know, I was trying to do my meditation. And when you're that sick, when you're either in that much amount of pain or you just can't function, like meditation really is, is laying on your back, looking up at the ceiling and going, okay, I'm helpless. There's nothing I can do here. And so it was in those times of, I'm talking months, you know, I didn't just have the, oh, after the first trimester, it's gone. Like this went into month four, <laughs> month five, month six. And I'm thinking, how can a little baby be growing in? Me? Oh, and um, it was very humbling. It was very scary. And I was forced to, 
to practice surrender because there was no other option. Mm. I couldn't fight it. And it was in those uh, challenging times on the couch uh, that I realized I had a gift that I wanted to share with the world. And in my practice, no matter how many people I could get my hands on, there was a limit to that. Yeah. Like even if I booked my schedule and there were only so many lives I could touch and I knew I was built to serve more. Mm. And so it was in those times that I decided I needed a way to reach other people and a greater audience to really serve them, specifically yeah. women. I've always been drawn to serving women. And I think, as I said, it's because of the disempowerment from my past. Yeah. Um, so that was really, really what birthed this idea of like, well, if I wrote a book, if I had that could be serving women, well, whatever's going on with me, like if I'm sick or if I'm with my family, so that really was like the thing that mm. shifted me from being in my practice to serving more people. So it was the the access to number one, like freedom. Well, number one is serve more people, impact more people. And also I see a byproduct is freedom that you can continue to do your work wherever you're at. You're not tied down to a physical, let's say one-on-one -on -one consultation yeah. or session to be able to, yeah. to support people. And like, there's so many people out there who are suffering. And if they only knew that your solution existed, then their lives would be so much better. And they could, they could get access to that. They could buy the book, they could listen to the podcast, they could go to the live event, they could hire you as a coach, right? They could do all these things to get access. But most people just don't even know that they're is a solution out there. I think a, a big challenge is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know I experienced it. Sound like you did as well. Like nobody understands the the pain that I'm going through. Like yeah. I can't share this with anyone. It's it's yep. it's too bad. Like I can't I can't ever like I'll just bury it down and I'll just keep moving forward and forget try to forget about it. But it's like when we are able to share our th uh, authentic, deepest wounds and, and traumas and things that have happened to us, that's when we're able to be free so that we can go serve other people and make the biggest impact. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, yeah, in sharing, you know, and, and connecting, we, it makes us really human. Mm -hmm. I mean, Br Dr. Brene Brown, I've been following her for a long time now, and, you know, she shares how, uh, how debilitating shame is yep. and how empowering vulnerability is. And she says in, in, in you know, my interpretation of it, it's like vulnerability is the greatest access point for connection. Mm -hmm. So the very thing that we're running from and thinking, oh my gosh, I could never share this secret part of me is the thing that's going to connect you more deeply and ground you more deeply in that sacred partnership, whether it's sacred partnership and friendship, yeah. or it doesn't have to look like, you know, your intimate partner. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I am, I am just blown away by people who are, when they open up that vulnerability. And this is why, you know, I really work with serving, uh, women who there are so many women that they're very successful in other areas of their life yeah. and they hide, they yep. hide behind like this armor and they don't let people in because it would require vulnerability and the queen actually is quite vulnerable right she's in her power but vulnerable so it's like the marriage of vulnerability with this beautiful strength and it's both wow so if there is a, a woman out there listening who doesn't like maybe she knows deep down inside she's a queen but she doesn't like really believe it she doesn't feel it she's not like living it where do you start with with that person to help her remember yeah it's a journey of self-love self-care and self-worth yeah. so where it starts is uh taking really good care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that might look like, you know, looking at what are the foods you're putting in your body? Are they nourishing? Are they um, supporting you? Mm -hmm. Do you move your body regularly? Right? It doesn't have to be going out and, and being an intent, like, I love exercise. So I do these crazy things where I'll go and, you know, do a tough mutter or yep. run through the mountains. You're like, it doesn't have to look like that. It can be very simple. But when we, we, you know, motion creates emotion. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Motion creates emotion. So when we are able to move our body, we're able to connect with a deeper part of ourselves. And so I really encourage exercising, taking care of yourself. And quite honestly, one of the fastest ways to reconnect is through self-pleasure. You know, for a woman to actually, she doesn't need a partner for that to, to, to bring back pleasure into her life. So that could actually look like, you know, self-pleasure, like what we're thinking about, right. you know, <laughs> stimulation, right? Like that. But it yeah. could also look like, you know, something like, you know, buying a chocolate bar that's $10 that you would never do for yourself, mm. right? And, and taking in the essence of, of that pleasure of each bite of the chocolate bar yeah. that you would never buy for yourself. Mm. Right. So these are some just simple things of returning a woman to her own worth yeah. and giving herself the ability to experience pleasure and joy and her body and all of those things. Wow. I, I think that's so powerful. Just whatever is the, the smallest step that we can get started with it doesn't have to be, you know, to buy ourselves a trip to Paris, although that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> like if you yeah. can do it. Let's do it. And it, it's like, what can I do today? What would, what would make a difference for me today? What have I been eyeing in the store that I think is, you know, far too far out of my reach, you know, or, or at least I, I wasn't willing to give it to myself because, oh, well, I have to go prioritize my kids, my family, put everyone else first, my job, yeah. whatever, you know, and to, to say, you know what, I, maybe I can splurge on that $10, $20, $30, whatever it is thing that makes me feel good. And yeah. I think it's, it's important to recognize like, where is it coming from as well? Because I think some people can go uh, impulsively buy. And so if, if you're constantly buying things, this may not be the solution for so you. Might, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but if, if you haven't treated yourself, maybe it's buying, maybe it's something else, you know, maybe it's sitting down and watching an old episode of Friends or, you know, whatever the thing is that you've been craving for, but you haven't given yourself you haven't been generous with yourself about, um, then do that. And also I wanted to talk about the exercising because I think that we might even have a lot of people who tune into this show who are exercising, who are walking, who are you know running, who might even be lifting weights and ask yourself, are you doing, especially for women, are you doing the sensual things that is is a style of exercise? Are you dancing? Are you doing yoga? Are you, you know, what what are the other varieties of, of different ways that you can move your body? Because even lifting weights, you can get into this kind of, um, you know, kind of mechanical, for me at least for, as a man, a very mechanical way of, you know, doing things. That totally. is, it's, it's very stiff and rigid. It's supposed to activate a certain muscle group. And that's why I do it to grow that muscle group, but to create more flow and rhythm and emotion, right? Motion that creates emotion that can take more of an intuitive flow and feeling into our bodies. Absolutely. And so what you're speaking of, it's like the difference between what we would call more like the yang, yang energy, mm -hmm. which is very masculine and it's out yeah. there and it's very driven mm -hmm. versus more of the yin, you know, the gentle, the calm. And you're right. Uh, dance is one of the greatest ways a woman can access her femininity. Yeah. And you could be the most horrible woman, the dancer, like it's not about how you look. And, and so we talk about those simple things you can do. Go turn on your favorite song mm -hmm. and, you know, dance your heart out in three minutes. You know, what, what is the length of a song? Two minutes, three minutes. Yep. I mean, it's not very long, mm -hmm. but watch how different you feel after like shaking your booty and really like that is such a fantastic way wow. to connect to the feminine, to the divine. I love it. I love it, Kelly. This is, this is great. So the, you mentioned self-worth, self-love, um, self-care. Those are like the three things that women really get to dive into. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on around those that, that they might need to know? Or did you want to move into after we've taken care of the self, like how do we actually start to build up, up the, the queen that is within us and then attract and magnetize that king? Yeah. So every woman has a magnet, right? Mm. And the magnet is, is, you know, Qigong would say it's like in the lower Dantian, which is right beneath the belly when we're talking about the energy centers. Right. And so, um, you know, it is about uh, getting that quite shiny. And what I mean by that is getting your magnet stronger. And mm. one of the ways you're going to get your magnet stronger is to let go of these beliefs that you have from the past that are slowing you down. So this is where the real work, this is where the real work it's begins. Deep, deep work. <laughs> deep work, right? And so um, it can look like journaling, you know, journaling about 
the thoughts that you have that you know hold you back, Mm -hmm. right? So if there are thoughts that you have that you know, like for example, some women, it could be as simple as, oh, all the good men are taken. Mm -hmm. And in that thought, you know, writing it down and go, okay, what else? What else could be true? Like, is this really true? I love Byron Katie's work. And Mm -hmm. the reason why I love it, it's very simple to nut it down to four questions you can go through. Look, the sun is shining. Oh my gosh. It is intense. You you were just talking about shining. Are you you just like magnetizing everything today, Kelly? (laughs) Let's bring it on. Bring on the sunshine. You know, it's so funny because it's like we have the shadow side and the light side. The yin and and the the yang. (laughs) You know? And we can't know our light Mm. unless we experience and dive into the shadow. So it's that willingness to go into the crevices. And it doesn't mean that it needs to be so heavy. Mm. You know, I think that a lot of women are scared to go to those deep places and those dark places. And uh, so it could be as simple as asking a great girlfriend out for tea Mm. and sharing with her just one limiting belief that you know that you have and ask her for help. Mm. How, what is her perspective on this? You know, what would she do? to move through this. So there are, you know, engage those people that already love you and they see you as the light, allow them to be, you know, the, the reflection of the reminder of who you really, really are. Uh, and along that thread, a beautiful practice is to ask those you love some words that they think would describe you. Mm. Mm. And write those down and begin to bring those into your life. Wow. So it's like, what are, what are our strengths? What are the things that we're already doing well? Cause that's, that's the light that emerges from our, our source, our lower Dantian that we get to amplify and mag and magnify even more so that we can yeah. attract be even more powerful attractors and creators. Absolutely. So yeah, so it's both as my face is showing with the light, it's both <laughs> a, like calling in the light and remembering who you really are and be willing to go into that darkness and do the work. So, you know, there are many different ways to go about that from from hiring a coach to, you know, buying a book that's going to help you to unravel those limiting beliefs, go to a personal growth seminar, Mm. like get some support. This is not meant to be done alone. Mm. With the limiting beliefs, how does someone know if they have done the work or done enough work to be able to manifest that king? I don't think you would ever know. And I think that <laughs> truly, truly, yeah, like yeah. that, that we, we are like an onion. Yeah. And as we become more awake, we peel through the onions mm. to get us back to the core. And so there are women out there that are so hard of themselves and they've done so much work. And so if you're listening thinking, I've done so much work, mm. then maybe your medicine is surrender. Maybe you're working too hard. Maybe you can let go. Dang. So I, I hear that a commitment to a way of being, like who, who as a queen, who am I going to be? Who am I choosing to be in this moment and every moment, regardless of if the king shows up or when the king shows up, like I'm going to continue doing this for me because it's important for me and doesn't matter if anyone else approves or likes it or anything like that. It's, it's first to fill ourselves up or fill that queen up. Yeah. So the, here's what the queen knows. And I love this. Actually, some woman shared this with me in a seminar and she actually is from a queen's lineage in Africa. Wow. I mean, she's an amazing woman. It just so happens that she also is a relationship coach. So we totally connect it. Yeah. And she's like, Dr. Kelly, I have something to tell you. And I'll never forget it. She says, in my culture, we're taught the queen leans back. And I went, whoa. (laughs) Whoa, right? Especially for all those like go-getters that are out there trying to like achieve love. You don't, you don't achieve love. You lean back, you know? Um, a, a queen knows of her worth and when she gets off track, it's generally one thing has happened. Mm. She's too up here and not enough here. Mm. So it's this great journey from the head to the heart. 
And so asking yourself, who am I being? Am I being love? Am I loving myself? Am I doing those things? Like, don't wait for the guy to come. Like, if mm. there is something, you know, that you thought, oh, wow, I've always wanted to take a photography class. And my, my idea has been like, I would take it with my boyfriend, go out and take the photography <laughs> class. Like, you actually know what you need to be doing. It's, it's listening to your heart. It's the greatest, most powerful thing that you have. Mm. And so uh, it is about listening and allowing for that guidance to come. And uh, for most women, it is about, you know, stop working so hard. Mm. I mean, I, in my journey, I know what it was like to uh, try to go out there and get it, which yeah. is very masculine. It's, yeah. the, it's action. And so it's this dance, just like the light and the shadow. It's the dance of, you know, living your life now as if he's already here. Wow. Mm. That's what a queen does. Mm. I like that. I want, I want to dive into this even more because I think this is a point that a lot of people struggle with because we, we hear about manifestation, which is the thinking, the energy, getting it into alignment, visualizing, um, you know, praying, asking for guidance, asking for things to come to us. And I know for me to attract my dream woman, first of all, I had to get clear on her, right? Who, who it is I want to attract, number one. Like, okay, well, what do I want? What do I not want? Let's make sure, you know, usually I could find the, the opposites and, and piece together the picture of who she is. And then I would say, okay, who do I get to be to attract yes. that, that man or to, to attract that woman? <laughs> who do I get to be to do that? And so I got to design myself in essence to because I wanted to be that man I wanted to be that family man I wanted to be that leader that patriarch so to speak so that I could attract a matriarch a beautiful epic gorgeous queen who's a hard worker but also a, the most nurturing loving mother right I want both I want both worlds um and I had to I got the opportunity to say okay who do I get to be to attract that and I sent love to her, right? I, I sent like energy saying, hey, before I even knew who she is, like I'm going to send you love, like wherever you're at in the world, here's what I think you look at like, here's what life is going to be like when we're together, da, 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 da. And like, I just was so unattached to it. I just committed to the surrender to the, piece. That's the yes, feminine, yes. right? <laughs> just committing to the practice though, yeah. not ever needing her to be there, yeah. but rather knowing and having faith that she's going to show up at the perfect time. And simply the practice, simply the behavior of, of attracting, of sending her good energy, things like that, that fulfilled me. Like I didn't even need a physical person there to make me fulfilled because I was loving who I was being in the moment. And I feel like that is a, like, stop trying to reach yep. and remember that, like, like feel the the universe like pulling in to your center and it's like so powerful it is so powerful uh i love there's a word uh that i um i'm trying to think who stated it uh they it, it's a made-up word and it's called feel feelization feelization Ooh. and it's this Ooh. idea that we need to feel it before it becomes a reality so when we mm. look at like the density of thought and reality it's like things to look at the things in your life that you have already yeah. and remember the things that they used to be just a thought or a dream and you brought that thing or attracted that thing yeah. into your life. It went from a thought and a feeling and then it was brought down into reality, which is the densest form. Yeah. So I love this idea of feelization mm. because we get to give ourselves the gift in advance. So one of the practices I have my women do is they'll go into that quiet space and we'll lead them and we'll guide them to their perfect day. Mm. What does the perfect day look like when, when, you know, that partner is in your life and, and we go through all the feelings and we identify like, what are the top feelings that really get you excited? And for every woman, it might be a little bit different, right? So when we can identify the feelings in advance and, you know, this is something your audience can do today. Like to close your eyes, imagine your ideal mate, you know, imagine maybe being in his arms or waking up in the morning or having that time in the morning to enjoy the hot cup of coffee and you feel the coffee and the heat and you see the steam rising and you're in a beautiful conversation before you start your day. This is feelization. Is it, is it, is what is it about that? Is it that you feel stable? Is it that you feel loving? It, you know, what are the feelings? Once you can identify the top three feelings, 
you can practice giving yourself those feelings through other vehicles every day. I, I love that because everything that we want outside of us, so to speak, is just a feeling. We think it's going to give us a feeling. So if we want a car, we think it's going to give us a feeling of exhilaration, of status, of being important, of being wanted, being desired. If we want a, a man, we think it's going to give us some kind of feeling of feeling safe, of feeling loved, of feeling wanted, of feeling important, of feeling whatever, sexy, beautiful, whatever that feeling is. There's no wrong feeling. It's all of our, our internal guidance, our internal, internal source saying, this is what I want more of. This is what I, I love to feel. This is what I want to expand. This is what is why I'm here to get more of this, to create more of this, to embody more of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, realization is where it's at. I right? love it. Like, that's <laughs> amazing. Give yourself the gift of an advance. I love it. I love it. So, you know, when, when women come to you, what do you see as their biggest challenge to, to attracting that king? Is, is it something that we've already talked about? Is there something else that, that you, they're usually stuck on that is causing them to not get that man in their life? I would say the number one thing is their past mm. and how they've interpreted their past and how they've created these limiting beliefs. Yeah. So they have a love story. And the love story that they're running in their mind is pieces of their past. So we, you know, as little beings, we're making up a story of what does it mean to be in love? What does it mean to be in relationship? So we take on a little piece from what mom and dad were, you know, uh, were they together? Were they apart? Did they fight all the time? So as little, pe as little beings, we're like sponges taking on this meaning of what does relationship mean? And along the way, you know, what does your storyline look like? Mm. Who are the people that you've dated? Is there, is there pain in that story? Often there's pain and pleasure. So to the psyche, it's quite confusing because here you are looking at your past and there's part of me, your heart's going, I want love. Mm. And there aren't many role models for you or or, you know, you haven't let go of other people's stuff that's not even yours. So, um, so really, you know, in, we actually have an event coming up and it's like the three part the step by step pieces day one. It's like, we release our past. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be present carrying all this baggage about, you know, the painful parts of relationships. Cause your psyche would be like, I don't want that. And it'll throw the blocks up. Remember my story? I was like, I knew I was with the king when he said, when can I see you again? And I was like, I kind of blew him off. And especially when he was like, can I see you on Wednesday? And he said, you know, girls got to eat. Like that was my protective mechanism. Like, oh my gosh, he's here. So there must have been a part of my psyche that was resisting it because there was still a little pain associated. Like, oh my gosh, he's here. Yeah. Right. So we all have these stories from our past linked to love. And so it's, there's no perfection here. As I said, it's layers of an onion, yeah. but if you could take like, like the first like big chunk out of the outside, you're doing great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it is, it's about releasing that love story. Step one, yeah. step two is like reclaiming your power to create the life. Like your power is not outside of you. Right. You don't need to wait. Like you really can, can get and reconnect to that power mm -hmm. inside and, and, and sometimes it's by remembering what you've already accomplished, you know, success leaves clues and you really can remember that like, oh yeah, you can manifest. You've done this before, maybe not in this area of your life, but you can bring some of those strategies into this area of your life. Mm -hmm. So that's like the reclaiming of the feminine. And then day three, we actually put them through this whole process of rewriting a new story that's based on pleasure and not pain. Mm. Mm. I love it. I love it. I think it's so important. So clearing up the past, reclaim yep. your power. Like you, you get, you get to take it back. And then in the future, if you want to create that future, if you want to pull it in, if you want to magnetize it, you get to like supercharge that with energy and make that come to life, make that, that vision come to life. I think it's absolutely. It's, it's like, I'm getting chills. It's the feelization. Like I, I'm like, <laughs> like channeling all these women. They're like, Oh my gosh, I got it. They're going to go out and they're going to go through and start exploring in this three-step mm -hmm. process. Wow. I, I, I think it's so amazing the work that you're doing, Kelly, because these, these women have been carrying their story, carrying the trauma, carrying the pain 
carrying the baggage of the past and like they just didn't know any better right most, yeah. most people just don't know that we are able to free ourselves from it we just haven't found out how we've been trying to do it on our own there's just different things and i wanted to dive into that cuz i think a lot of women want to do, to be successful, to create the man of their dreams, the king. Um, and what, if they feel like they are being dependent on someone, they might, they might confuse interdependence, codependence, relying on a coach. Can you, can you just distinguish some of those for us so that we can know what is healthy, what is good, um, connection and bonds and like sisterhood and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So highlight there and what you just shared, which is it's not a journey to be taken alone. Hmm. Like love is a risky business. Like stuff's going to come up. It's the greatest place for personal growth and development <laughs> is to have a partner being a reflection of your stuff, yeah. right? Good and bad, yeah. right? So um, I like to think of it as kind of a spectrum. Okay. And on one end of the spectrum is codependency. Okay. And believe me, I've been there, right? It's, it's, it's the woman that, you know, um, she thinks she needs a hero. And she loves to nurture. So she has this beautiful heart and this desire to nurture. And in the codependent relationship, you know, she gets to be the one that um, actually is going to fix her partner. And in reality, there's nothing to fix. Like she's actually giving herself a job that she doesn't really need. And the man is in his masculine, but not his true masculine, where he gets to be the hero. And you know what? In today's society, we don't need heroes, right? We need partnership, real, real right? people, An equal, real partner, yep. right? And so there we go, getting this camera going again. <laughs> <laughs> so much energy. Yes. Uh, so in that codependency, I think the the heart of it is a woman will fall in love with the potential. Mm. And she's not really in love, like like in love meaning she might be totally in love. So I, I might not be languaging this correctly, mm. but what her heart is hinged on is someday, someday wow. he'll be able to be my king someday. And in reality, it's a very unhealthy relationship. It's very manipulative and controlling. Yeah. And so that's what codependency is. And yeah. sometimes there are drugs and alcohol involved, sometimes not. Um, and so for me, it was that relationship that I had. It took me three years to get out of something that all my friends are like, who is this guy? You're not you. Like he shut down. Now, I'm not a victim here, mm -hmm. but I realized I was saying yes to actually putting my feminine power aside. You know, I lost it there for a while mm -hmm. and I actually lost who I was. I forgot who I was. I stopped exercising, which is crazy for me. I love to move my body. I have since I was a little girl. Right. So codependency is you're not really in your true feminine power and your man is not truly in his masculine power. So that's one of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what often happens is women who have been through that. They go to the other end of the spectrum, which I call that's that place of independence. Mm -hmm. These are my women. I totally connect with them. This is me and my in my medical practice where, you know, I was like out there. I didn't need a man. Right. Like. <laughs> heart though was like I totally want a man so I had this like I don't need a man I really want a man I don't need a man I really want a man and it was during those times in my life I actually my guard was still quite strong yeah. and so in having that guard I was actually if I did attract a man he was a weaker version of himself mm. so it's not like I became the hero but I I didn't allow myself to be vulnerable I could keep things more in control the independent woman is she's got she feels more safe. She's in control. No man is, you know, guiding her life. Like right. she's on a mission. And I love that energy because that's a woman who has found her power. Mm. But again, that queen power, remember how we said vulnerability is so important mm. in that. So you've got codependency. Often women will switch to the other end of the spectrum of independency. Yeah. And sometimes that needs to happen yeah. to actually begin to come back to center. Mm which is independent, interdependency, where two people come together and they uplift one another, they challenge one another, mm -hmm. you know, when one's up, you know, then the other one might be down. It goes like this. Yep. And through a longer period of time, like it's just, it's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. There's a willingness to like really be seen, be heard, right? This is where I guide women to be. And as I said, 
you, I can, I've witnessed women, even myself, where I've danced the dance to either. It's not like I'm a codependent person. Oh, I'm an independent person. Like when we look at our relationships, it can go like this for a while until it finds its center. Yeah. And that sweet spot is the king queen archetype. And I want to want to dive into that king queen archetype in just a second. And I also wanted to mention um, the the interdependence in the middle and the independent or the codependent um, that can also exist in in different um, quantities or different sides of the spectrum with different people in our life. We might have a, 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 a boyfriend or a husband who's one way, and then with our boss, we're a different way. We're the independent or we're the codependent. And so I think it's it's like really what I'm hearing is a big lesson is to reflect on ourselves like hey how are we showing up to ask as well our girlfriend go out for tea or whatever it might be to to get that feedback on hey how am i showing up and i love what you said as well when you were with that old guy who was not your king all your friends are like what are you doing like to get that yeah, feedback <laughs> like like are, are we listening to the feedback of the people around us who see the best in us who like know our hearts and what we want and what we want to create in our lives and are we listening to that feedback i think that's that's so important um if if you have any comments on that you can share or we can dive into the king queen archetype because i think that's that's such a powerful um archetype to to dive into yeah so yeah. tell us where, where did it come from and, and why, why did you decide on King and Queen? Well, uh, the King and Queen, it's been an exploration for many years. And I actually, for a long time, I was using the language goddess. Mm. I love the goddess. Right, energy. right. <laughs> right? Like I even explored, like if we were to look at the energy, the chakra system, yeah. all seven, seven chakras, is there a goddess that's connected to that energy center? So I spent some time like playing around with that and it was a really fun time. I love goddesses. I love the energy of the goddess. And I also just, even historically, mm. when I look at relationships now, you know, how they've changed over, over the years, um, I really started discovering we have kind of a get model. This is what I call it, a get model and a grow model hmm. in relationships. Wow. In the get model, in a patriarchal system, you know, a woman goes into marriage or partnership to get something, right? Mm. It's quite dated. She goes to get, you know, financial support. She goes to get, you know, the family and the baby. She goes to get everything's outside of her, right? And it's it's the get model because you know, for a long time, like we, when we actually go back in time, uh, a woman didn't even really, you know, there was a long period of time where a woman didn't own her worth. Like she was actually, quote, you know, if she was to be married, her father gave her away. Like to think about that, it, it, it you know, blows me away. And yet in still some cultures, we have arranged marriages, you know, like some of this, it still exists. So I never really got that right? This like get model. Again, I was more, if anything, more into that independent. I grew up like as, as a child, mom and dad saying, you know, you can be anything you want to be. So I never really aligned with that, hmm. you know, and we look at the development of women's power and their ability. Like it hasn't been that long. If you think about it, our ability to vote and to have mm -hmm. a say yeah. in, you know, in, in politics. And so anyway, you look at, there's been a long lineage and women have grown so much in reclaiming our power and getting back in alignment with this. And we had, you know, um, starting to realize we're not just women that, that, you know, our only sole purpose is to bear children, mm. right? Like a wake up call of like, we actually have so much to give to the world. So um, this distinction of this get model is very dated. Mm. And I think women and men are trying to find their roles. Like what a sacred union really look like because the boxes have been blown out in that it, it's not the the man makes the money and the woman raises the child like that's so dated yeah. and so now we have women that are stressed and overworked and they're trying to do everything hmm. and the men are trying to reconnect to their power because men and women are different we really are and and men have this beautiful capacity to like be the rock, you know, to hold structure. And uh, so anyway, in this new way of being in the world, it really is what I call a grow conversation, mm -hmm. which is you are in relationship 
in my opinion, for the highest good, which is to awaken. Yeah. And it's only through partnership, not only, that's a strong word, but it's a, it's a rapid way to really wake up to our highest potential. And that is more of the grow model of the king and queen coming together and figuring this out mm. and knowing that each couple looks different. They get to create what that partnership looks like. Yep. You know, I mean, we've got, you know, dads that are staying at home and we have women that are the primary breadwinner. Like yeah. it doesn't, we get to create that. Yeah. So for me, the sacred union of the king and the queen is a co-creation of mm. growth and spiritual development. So that's one thing is the king and the queen and just how times have changed so much. And I think men are trying to, men are learning how to be real men and women are learning how to be real women in their power. Cause again, it's a new world. We're in a new decade and we're still, we're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I feel like we're, you know? we're always we're always going to keep trying to figure it out, and that's why you know, like your live event that's coming up, hiring coaches, like that is that's the fastest way to break yeah. through and to create a whole new reality. Um, I want I do want to talk like just really quick in terms of magnetizing our man in 2020 or the king in 2020 for the woman out there who's listening. Like, what would you say is the biggest tip that you would give to that woman? And then uh, we can wrap up with how can they connect with you, how they how they can get to the event because I know. You got a ton of things going on today, preparing for this event. So tell us what's the top tip you would recommend. Okay. So I actually, it's funny in talking about the goddess, I kind of got sidetracked to the get and grow. So I'm just going to circle back there for a sure. moment sure. because it applies to what you just asked me. Love it. So Love in this exploration of the goddess, which I was so into and thinking, oh, this is so cool. Um, I had this moment in the redwoods of California mm -hmm. and I was working with a practitioner and in that moment, I got this whole download of the queen. And I saw myself sitting on a throne. Mm -hmm. And there was a part of me that didn't want to be sitting there, didn't want that visibility, didn't want to really own all of my power. There was still resistance there. Mm -hmm. And in that session, I realized there was the little girl in me that was thinking, oh my gosh, if you're a queen, you're going to let go of like the playfulness and the, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like, you know, uh, what if we lose something? What if we lose our freedom in being a queen? Again, some of that deep seated resistance still to the king and the queen thing. Yeah. So anyway, I had this download of what it meant to be a queen and really be sit on our throne. And again, in this metaphor, our king is right next to us, mm -hmm. right? And he's on the throne too. And we are co-creating our life and what the kingdom looks like. And there are people in the kingdom and it's, it's, it's not that we are better than, but we are creating this vision of what we come together in, in partnership mm. of creating. And it was in that moment, here was the distinction, the goddess versus the queen. A queen has how many kings? One. One. One king, one queen. There are many goddesses, mm. right? And I love that. And I still love the goddess energy. But the distinction is one king, one queen. Mm. Now, not to say there aren't many men out there that could be your king. I don't believe that there's only one soulmate. Mm. There are many soulmates. But it is a coming together of this beautiful union um, that is just magical. Mm. It's magical. So I just wanted to speak a, a moment to the queen. I love it. Now, you also said, you know, what's like a top tip yeah. for, for a queen? Um, that's tough because I teach so much and it's so tough. <laughs> yeah. One tip. Um, it's a journey of self-worth. Mm. You will only attract a man that's in vibrational resonance with who you're being. Yeah. And you spoke to this earlier today. Like that is, if you want a strong magnet that it's like, boom, mm. strongest magnet is you owning the level of worth that you expect your king to treat you with. And so just mm. like a guitar string on a guitar, we can pluck the string mm. and resonance, that string will begin to resonate and vibrate. And what do the other strings do? Do they just stay still? 
No, No, they begin to vibrate and they will vibrate in the same resonance. So it's no different energetically to really practice owning your worth. And in owning your worth, your magnet will get stronger and stronger. And the caliber of man you will attract Mm. will mirror your resonance and who you're being. Wow. I love it. I love it. It's it's like the core of creating a magnet like what is what is the mechanism quote unquote not to be too masculine but what is the mechanism that creates a magnet it's to supercharge it it's to get yourself into resonance with that which you desire so kelly i know there's lots of different ways that people can connect with you let's talk about how they can get to this live event i know it's coming up really soon here how they can um, message you like what what are the ways that they can get involved with you Absolutely. So uh, the website they can go to, it's called uh, drkellylive.com. So drkellylive.com and doctor is not spelled out. There are no dots. So D-R-K-E-L-L-Y, live, L-I-V-E.com. Go to that website. Currently, we are actually doing a partial scholarship. And what this means is over the course of those three days that I spoke about, day one, Mm -hmm reclaim or release your past day two you're going to reclaim that feminine power get your magnets strong as possible Uh day three rewrite your love story uh so those three days normally the the value on this is 997 dollars and yet i am committed 2020 this is your year if you're listening and you're like i want my king right it's a stake in the ground saying this is my year for love love is your destiny all you need to do is go to that website, drkellylive.com, and claim your partial scholarship. Right now, we're doing it for $97, not wow. $9.97. Wow. You can get a ticket all three days. We are going to love you up, bring you into sisterhood so that you don't need to do this alone. And we're doing a bring a friend for free. Mm. So in essence, grab your girlfriend that also nice. wants love. And you two, wherever you live, get on a plane, get the child care taken care of, take off work. That Monday is Martin Luther King's King Day. So a lot of people already have that Monday off. So it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So all you need to do, go to drkellylive.com, claim that personal scholarship today, bring a friend. I don't know how long we're going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in a gorgeous theater and, you know, it's going to be so much fun. You know, I don't know if you can tell, but I actually like to have fun. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, healing doesn't have to be heavy and Mm. oh, that's old school. Like we can do this and have fun. I love it. Kelly, you're such a powerhouse and they can also search you and they spell your name K-E-L-L-Y-S-C-H-U-H and they can find you on Facebook and they can send you a message, get a hold of you and thank you so much. I love this conversation about the queen. I I love my queen. I love celebrating her as a queen. So anyone who's listening right now, go get your king. I'm proof that they exist. Kelly's husband, Richard, is proof that they exist. And I'm sure all all the people who you've worked with, they're like, oh my gosh, it is possible. So remember that it is possible and create that for yourself because you freaking deserve it, you queen who's listening. And Kelly, thank you so much for being here. I know your event is going to rock the house. Thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs) 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 Woohoo! I love it. Have an amazing rest of your day. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm, Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon.